this week on Let's Get to the Point. All right, Serena, tell us about this Amex bonus with Hilton Hotels. Don't use the letter Hampton in. Unless necessary, right? Plus. So then that's how I found out that, you know, it is possible to get a free ticket to Disneyland, but you need at least 15 kids. And later. Hi, everyone. It's Jordan from Los Angeles. I recently signed up for the American Express Gold Card and got a really special offer of 90,000 point sign-up bonus and a $200 statement credit. I wanted to hear from you guys what you thought was the best way to maximize those new points. Hey, Helani, you just got 90,000 American Express membership reward points. What are you going to tell Jordan he should do with you? Jordan, the theme of this show has been transfer bonuses, I think. Now, let's get to the points. From passion for points, it's Serena. From points to travel expert, it's Keholani. From travel sergeant, it's Mikael. From Nicole's travel tips, it's Nicole. And from seat to a suite, it's Mitch Shannon. Hello and welcome to Let's Get to the Points, audio and video podcast, bringing you the very best in tips and tricks in the world of miles, points, and travel. I'm your host, Mitch Shannon, along with my co-hosts, who are the very best, if I do say so myself, Instagram and social media content creators in all things points, miles travel hello everyone how you doing hello hi hello good thank you first up she's a multitasking mother wife obsessive travel planner and points and miles enthusiast she loves pretending to be crazy rich with her family while flying in premium cabins and staying at luxurious hotels from passion for points it's serena hello serena hi How are you doing? I'm good. Next up, she's a native Hawaiian, former flight attendant, whose parents had used points and miles since the early 90s. She and her husband have embraced a lifestyle centered around travel, accruing hundreds of thousands of dollars in free travel, and now teaches you how to travel nearly for free. From points to travel expert, it's Kay Halani. Hello, Kay Halani. Hello, my kako. Also joining us is a guy who earned and redeemed millions of points and miles. He's been to some incredible bucket list places like Chernobyl, Cairo, and the Maldives. From the travel sergeant, it's Miguel. Hello, Miguel. Hello, everybody. Finally, she's a soccer mom and a marathoner and a public school math teacher, which makes her highly qualified in my book to teach people how to use their everyday spending to earn points and miles to travel more for less. From Nicole's Travel Tips, it's Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Hi, everyone. How are you tonight? Thank you, Nicole. Before we get started, this is your reminder to please hit the like button and make sure to subscribe now to our podcast wherever you watch or listen so you don't miss the next episode. You'll find the video and audio versions on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Instagram at Let's Get to the Points. Also, make sure to connect with us via social media. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get to the points. Okay, gang, I've got some incredible news for everybody. We've made it to our second episode. Yay! Yeah! (laughs) I don't know if I sent you the memo or not, but YouTube and Spotify, they picked us up for a full season of shows. How incredible is that? (laughs) All right. Okay, let's get right to it. There's been a lot going on in the world of points, miles, and travel. And we're going to start tonight with Kay Halani, and you are gonna be talking about something that is incredibly scary to me, actually moving your points and letting them set in an account, right? Yes, so I'm a strong believer in utilizing transfer bonuses. When you utilize the transfer bonus, you are taking your points from that bank's credit card and moving it over into airlines or hotels. We primarily transfer our points into the airlines with transfer bonuses. There are many different types of transfer bonuses. So we have used a 40% uh, transfer bonus from Citibank, a British Airways 40% from Amex, to transfer our points. And right now, for example, there is an Amex 25% transfer bonus to Air France and KLM. There's a 15% transfer bonus to Avianca, 10 to 20% transfer bonus to Cathay Pacific Asia Miles, and a 30% transfer bonus to Virgin Atlantic. 
And there's also one more, another city uh, transfer bonus for 25% to Air France. So you can use these transfer bonuses to maximize your value of your points. Um, what's very important if you do transfer your points and let them sit is that you know what you're going to use these points for. So you want to be sure that you have at least two, three, or four different types of flights in mind for that particular airlines where you're transferring your points to, or do not transfer your points because you don't just don't want to put it anywhere. Like you don't just don't want to shove it into Delta or um, even United because it's going to be hard to redeem your points for flights in there. So it's very important that you do your research so you're ready to move when the time comes. It also reduces a lot of stress because when it's time to buy a flight, when there's a sale or there's a really good deal on a flight and it's time to buy that flight, you are ready to go. You're not worried about transferring your points over. And sometimes there's glitches where that doesn't work or you want to upgrade to Emirates first class and you transfer your, you ready to transfer your points at the counter because they said there's a first class seat available and Emirates could glitch. You're not going to be able to get that seat. So be prepared. So this time around, did you transfer any points anywhere? So we were going to transfer to Air France, but I've changed my mind because I found some other tickets to take us to Europe. And we do have the Cathay Pacific transfer bonus in our account for Amex, um, but I'm not quite ready to transfer it over. We're going to save our points in Amex for right now. So which is your favorite transfer partner for um, when you do this type of transfers? We put a lot of points into British Airways, so we have over 200,000 points sitting in there right now. Just because there's a lot of Hawaii flights, and our daughter is in college over there, so we needed some backup if we fly non-rev, and um, it's just a good area, and there was a big transfer bonus. So Yeah, I love that because, you know, I booked an Air France flight a couple of months ago, and I was waiting and waiting for a bonus, and I wish I had done what you did. I wish I had transferred over when there was a bonus last year. Right, right. It's a great opportunity. And there's so many different options in British Airways. So you can't go wrong doing that. Miguel, tell us about what you have going on at Disneyland for right now. I, I posted a reel a few weeks ago that went kind of viral. And it was talking about saving half off at Disneyland. It was it was a joke, which is crazy to think some people were actually DMing me asking me like, hey, so what was the secret? I'm like, no, there, that was it. It was just a joke. But I went last week with my daughter as a chaperone from her school. And I learned that there is a way to get free tickets, but it requires a little bit of work. So Disneyland has this thing called Disney Imagination Campus. And it, they're workshops or performances that students can be a part of. And this deals with either arts and humanities, science and technology, leadership and teamwork, or performing arts. Now, there's a minimum of 15 students or kids and uh, two chaperones. Now, I found that through this Disney Imagination Campus, the tickets for the students, on average, they, say, they save about $75 per, per student, depending on how many days you go for. And for every 10 kids, you'll have a complimentary chaperone ticket. So this can be used, doesn't have to be used through a school. I mean, it could be a group of, of school kids, but it could be Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. It could be a religious group. It could be a sports team, a soccer team, you know, all kinds of different groups. As long as you can get together at least 15 students, you can plan this Disney Imagination Campus trip and you'll get one free chaperone ticket for every 10 kids that you book through here. So then that's how I found out that you know, it is possible to get a free ticket to Disneyland, but you need to recruit, you know, at least 15 kids uh, to get your free ticket. So Miguel, there's two ways to save at Disney. One, leave the kids at home. Or two, pick yes. up 15 additional kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think leaving the kids at home is the easiest one of these options. Um, but, it, you know, but it is possible to get a free Disneyland ticket if you just recruit some kids. So for the child tickets, are they the normal price or are they discounted too? So, so no, they actually, you actually save uh, depending on how many days you go for. If you do anything from two to five days, the park hopper, it's actually about 70 to $80 cheaper than at the gate. So yeah, that's another good way to earn a new sign up bonus and, you know, have everybody pay you back for their tickets. Um, but there's other ways to earn uh, Amex points. And one of them, one of my favorite is Rakuten. And I know uh, Nicole is going to talk about that, right? So I'm, I'm new to the Rakuten game. I started sometime late last year. And I remember seeing the sign up for an elevated sign up for $40 
if you refer someone, if they spend $40, you would both either get $40 or you could cash them in for membership rewards points. So I'm not sure if other people had this idea, but I was like, all I need is an email and a person to spend $40. So what I did is I had my kids sign up with their email. I sent them the referral link and they clicked on it and I had to buy items for them. Like my daughter needed new soccer cleats. My son needed contact lens. So then I made the purchase through their accounts. And then I got the referral bonus from each of their accounts. And they also got a check for $40. So it was a win-win for both of us. They got $40. I got 4,000 points. I mean, it was a no-brainer at that point. So when you gather up the 15 kids to take them on this Disneyland trip, have all of them sign up through Rackets in. Nicole, so... Um, when the kids signed up, was did they have to put in their age? Is there a minimum age to sign up for an account? No, they didn't ask for any age. It just asked for email and name. And so we actually did it twice, one with their school email and one with their personal email. Do you have a favorite um, big points maker that you bought on Rakuten? Something you remember that got you a lot of points? Uh, I just bought my son contact lens with this promotion and it was 20, 20 points per dollar. Hold on, 20 points per dollar? Yeah, 20 yeah. points Where per dollar. Where have I been? <laughs> Jeez. I actually learned about that from Points and Miles Doc. She says she usually stocks up on her contact lens. I mean, she spends way more than I do, but at 20 points per dollar, one purchase, and we netted, what, almost 3,000 points? Jeez Louise. Yeah. You sign up three people, that's 12,000 more points, plus the, you spend 100 over there, that's... 2,000 points and you got a free trip to Hawaii and yeah. a flight if you can find it. <laughs> they really do. Wow. Yeah. All right, Serena, tell us about this Amex bonus with Hilton Hotels. Yeah, so right now, the Hilton Amex cards have a special offer right now when you open their cards. and It's special because they include free night certificates. These Hilton free night certificates are my absolute favorite because you can get tremendous outsized value from them. And you can use them for almost all Hiltons. There are some exceptions, and those exceptions are usually the Grand Vacation Club Hiltons. But all the aspirational Hilton properties that you actually want to stay at are eligible for these certificates. You just have to make sure that you can find standard award availability. And they changed this recently where you can now use these certificates any day of the week. Before, you could only use it on weekends, but now every day, any day of the week. They also work at even the luxury luxury Hilton brands like Conrad, Waldorf Astoria, and LXR. This is why I'm really excited about these cards right now because of the free night certificates. Now, the regular no annual fee Hilton Amex card comes with a 70,000 point sign up bonus and a free night certificate. So you're getting a free night certificate on a card with no annual fee, which I think is amazing. And you only have to spend $1,000 in the first three months, which is pretty easy for for a lot of us. The regular link out there has a 70,000 point sign up bonus, but there are also links with an 80,000 point sign up bonus. So you might want to look out for the 80,000 bonus if that's more interesting to you. So let's say that you're in a household and you refer each other. Like for example, right now, I can refer my husband to the no annual fee Hilton card. I will get 20,000 Hilton points and he will get 70,000 Hilton points. And together collectively, we'll have 90,000 points in our household. But if you're not in that situation and you're just opening this card, then you'll want to look for the 80,000 point offer with the free night certificate. Another card that has the free night certificate is the Hilton Surpass card, which has a $95 annual fee. You'll get 130,000 Hilton points for the sign up bonus and a free night certificate after you spend $2,000 in three months. And this gives you complimentary gold status. And gold status gives you free breakfast at most international properties. And then if you spend $15,000 in the calendar year, you can get another free the Nate certificate on top of that. And then there's the Hilton Amex business card. And this is a card that me and my husband just opened. This card has a 150,000 point sign up bonus with the free night certificate after spending $4,000 in three months. And just like the surpassed card, the business card comes with complimentary gold status, which means free breakfast at most international properties. 
And again, if you spend $15,000 in a calendar year, you can get another free night certificate. Now let's talk about the best places to use these free night certificates. I prefer to use them at international properties only because my status with the free breakfast goes a long way at the international properties. In the U.S. Hiltons, they will give you a credit, which a lot of times will not even cover breakfast. So good places to use these free night certificates, Waldorf Astoria Maldives, Conrad Maldives, Waldorf Astoria Los Cabos. There's the Mango House in the Seychelles. And if you don't know where the Seychelles are, it's a group of islands in the Indian Ocean, east of Africa. There's the Zemi Beach House in Anguilla, and Anguilla is in the Eastern Caribbean. There's the Waldorf Astoria Amsterdam. There's an LXR in Kyoto. And then there's also Conrad Bora Bora, which is where I'm going to use these certificates, hopefully, if I can find the availability. If you don't want to go to international properties, that's okay. There are also lots of U.S. properties that you can use these certificates at, like the Grand Wailea in Maui. There's the Waldorf Astoria in Beverly Hills. If you like to ski, there's the Waldorf Astoria in Park City, Conrad in New York, the Arizona Biltmore. There are a lot of options for you to use these certificates. So definitely give it a look if this is something um, that interests you. I'm glad you mentioned all those different places to utilize these Hilton points and the certificates because there are a lot of junk, <laughs> that's the term I should use, not good Hilton hotels that sometimes require like 80,000 points when you could get a much better value going to the places that you mentioned. Don't use these at a Hampton Inn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless necessary, Unless right? It's going to expire. Are you <laughs> not going to use it at all? <laughs> Yeah. But think about, you know, these hotels and where you want to stay, then go after the certificate. I'd kind of been waiting for this offer. I saw this last year with the free night rewards and I was like, this is this is a good time to get them. But I think you should have a strategy if you want to use this because Hilton requires a little bit more strategy because, you know, sometimes they require a lot of points for a stay. But if you know the standard rates for one of these aspirational properties and you know how many you need. What I like about probably getting two of the cards, either the business and one of the other cards, referring my wife to the same two cards, because with Hilton, you're able to transfer points to each other online. So you can you can really pull all these points. We both get two cards. You can, you, you'll have enough for one of these aspirational properties like Conrad Bora Bora, which is probably what I'd like to do. And aside from the points that you can get from these cards by doing that, you'll have the, you know, the free night rewards, which you can either extend your stay or you know, take another trip somewhere else. So yeah, I might get these this time. So Mitch, I know that you just got back from Chile. Please tell us about your trip. Yeah, um, thanks. So I'm really excited because um, I booked this trip kind of on a whim with a friend and uh, that I work with. And she and I, we kind of used our Alaska miles. We went on down to Santiago. And as our show evolves and as our show grows, I think one of the most important things that we can start talking about is travel and what we do when we go to these places and what we see and what we eat and what we do. And lately, when I go to these countries and these places, I really want to seek out people that I identify with, you know, being part of the LGBTQ plus community. I want to look for those opportunities that I can really connect with those people when I'm in their countries, because that's really important for me. And I found this company, they're called Pride Tours in Santiago. And I met up with Freddie when I was down there. And I've been doing this points and miles and travel thing for a very long time now. And I have to say, over all the years, there's only ever been one other company that I've ever truly enjoyed as a tour operator. And that was in Sam Reap, Cambodia. I met up with uh, another guy there. His name was Surrett. And it was an incredible tour that he gave us of Sam Reap and in Cambodia, probably the best tour guide that we ever had. And meeting Freddie and being able to spend time with him, the things that we got to do, we went to these wineries down in Santiago. And if you know anything about Chile, it's all about the wine and it's all about the food and the people. And these wineries, they were incredible. We did these wine tastings and these pairings and these foods. It was a really incredible tour. And, you know, I just really want to thank Freddie and the team at Pride Tours because they really took care of us while we were down there. So Mitch, do you find that Chile as a, as a country is very LGBTQ plus friendly? Yeah, so that's 
a great question, Serena, because as I was doing my research on this country, Chile has really opened their doors and they're really welcoming. And there really isn't any issue with being part of the community down there in um, Chile. So it's all part of this tour. So you really got to check that out. That sounds like a super cool tour. Do you have the contact information? Yeah, we'll um, we'll put the number and the contact information in there for Pride Tours and um, put all that in the show notes for you as well. All right, thanks everyone. It's time to move things along and we're gonna get to our weekly recap. It's time for our next segment and it's called our weekly recap. This is where each of us take a moment to share and look at what redemptions and trips we booked or took this week. We're also gonna share with you any lessons that we learned or any other big tips of our week. So I wanna start with Nicole. You did something pretty interesting this week. You did a guest of honor booking with Hyatt. Let's talk about that. So guest of honor is a benefit of Hyatt Globalist, where you're able to book a hotel stay for a friend, family member on points, and they actually get your globalist benefits in their state, even though they may not have the status. So a friend of mine is running the Brooklyn Half Marathon, and I was able to book a guest of honor stay for her at the Hotel Bowery in Chinatown. So she'll be able to get free breakfast on the days that she's there. She'll also be able to get an upgrade if there's one available. And she, because we paid with points, she doesn't have to pay the destination fee and she gets all the perks of this destination fee. And at the Hotel Bari, there are some pretty good perks with this destination fee, like yoga, complimentary coffee at this really cute coffee shop down the street. This is a way where everyone could possibly share their globalist status with a friend or a family member and it costs nothing. It was really easy to do. I I literally just called up the Hyatt 1-800 number, gave them my membership number, her membership number, and they booked it less than five minutes. In the beginning, it seemed like it would have been an intimidating task, but it wasn't. It was super easy. And I think everyone should try that. You know, this is a gift that keeps on giving. You kind of like paying it forward. Definitely give it a try. The other thing that I booked was we have a stay coming up in 2024 in Cape Town. And I was able to use the Twitter application to book an advanced stay. So another benefit of Globalist is you can book an award stay without having the points in your account at that time. They allow you to book the hotel stay as long as you have the points in your account within seven days of your stay. This way you can make a booking preemptively and possibly cancel if it doesn't work out, but then you don't have to commit your points to that stay. Kehalani, what did you book? You were something about Excalibur? Yes, so um, MGM had their annual sale um, and we found rooms for $19 a night. And because we have MGM gold status through status matching, the resort fees are waived. And by booking these low price nights, it helps us to obtain globalist status, which we would have globalists from the rest of this year, but we have globalists already. But anyhow, if you didn't, you would have it the rest of this year, next year until February 2025. So that's what we're working on right now. Also, my husband um, finished up a three week work stay at Marriott. So we are two more nights away from earning titanium. And we booked four business class life lat seats on Airtap Portugal from JFK to Lisbon. And this was on Life Miles and it was 35,000 points and $51 and 70 cents each. And it ended up that my daughter could not come on the trip. So we needed to cancel the flight. And we did that the next day with no problem at all. It took a little while, but we got it done. Um, Serena, what have you been up to this Hi, week? so this summer, I'm taking the family to Niagara Falls. We are going to continue on to the Caribbean after that. But I booked a Marriott in Niagara Falls, and they canceled my booking. I got the email within 30 days before we are supposed to arrive, and I called Marriott about it. Unfortunately, they don't have a policy in place with advanced cancellations. Marriott felt I was given enough notice about the cancellation, and so now I'm stuck. There are policies in place if they walk you. Walking you means you show up on the day of check-in, they don't have a room for you, and they're supposed to put you somewhere else. And they usually provide some sort of compensation. But when they cancel in advance, I'm pretty much on my own. So I booked this particular property with a 35K free night certificate, which I received from the Marriott Amex business card. They put the certificate back into my account after they canceled my reservation, but now I'm stuck with having to find alternate accommodations. 
And since Merritt Corporate wasn't willing to help me, I decided to reach out to the hotel themselves. Now, the hotel wanted to rebook me at the nearby courtyard, but I didn't want to stay at the courtyard. I wanted to stay at the more luxurious Marriott Falls View Hotel. And this hotel has rooms with gorgeous views of the falls from the Canadian side. That's where I wanted to stay. So what I did is I got the email for the general manager. I wrote a letter to him. I was nice and polite. I described the situation. I talked about how I was inconvenienced and I specifically asked for what I wanted. The GM called me the next day and he was so nice. He was such a nice gentleman. He empathized with me and he said, no problem. You go book that hotel and I will reimburse you for it. So I was really happy after talking to him because the outcome was exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and so the lesson learned here is to advocate for yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. If you think that you have been inconvenienced, please reach out to the general manager of the property or talk to a supervisor at Marriott Corporate to see what they can do for you. I'm sure the average person would experience this cancellation and think, oh no, I guess I better find someplace else to stay. Meanwhile, there may not be any points availability remaining at any other property close by, or maybe the cash rates could be ridiculously high if you rebook. So that's my experience this week, and I hope viewers and listeners will feel empowered to advocate for themselves if they end up in a similar situation. So that's my lesson this week. And hopefully um, listeners can also do the same if this happens to them. And if you don't know how to write something to a manager you know, like this, just use ChatGPT and have them draft something for you and just tweak it. And that's what I've been doing. Miguel, that's exactly what I did. I used <laughs> to, to write this email. Love it. <laughs> And it was beautifully done. I had to adjust some things, you know, enter the exact hotel I needed, you know, tweak it to make it more personal for me. And he loved it. <laughs> he, so it he worked. Wanted. So Chad GPT, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. <laughs> so Mitch, what did you book this week? Yeah. Um, so I, I think some of you know, maybe you've seen on my Instagram, um, but my husband and I, every year in January, we go down to Melbourne for the Australian Open. Paulette loves going to tennis, and I love going to Australia. It's one of our favorite things to do. And something that you're going to find out about me if you don't know this already, I'm not one of those people where I'm trying to get every amount out of every point that I can get, and I'm not going to take the most direct route that we go either. I like to kind of go on an adventure. For me, it's all about the ride and not so much about how quickly I can get to wherever we're going to go. And we're already planning for Australia for 2024 in January. So I was able to book on Qatar in their Q suites. And we're going to go from Los Angeles to Doha, Doha to Melbourne. And yeah, it's a long way. And the points are a little high, but it's 120,000 points and $200 in taxes and fees. And for us, we love the Q Suites. It's probably one of our most favorite business class products that is out there right now. For us to go through the Middle East, we really like doing that anyway because it, we feel like it really resets our body clock. Then kind of these shorter Pacific flights that you take, like the 10 to 12 hour flights. Yeah, it's longer, but you're in a Q suite and you get these incredible meals and it's just an absolutely fabulous time. I moved the points from American Express to British and then from British to Qatar. And it was a couple of years ago when British Airways started allowing transfers of points between BA and Qatar. And it's really cool because it's you can get a lot better redemptions and the prices are a little bit lower than you would get with British Airways. And if you time it right, when American Express is offering a transfer bonus to BA, you can actually do a lot better in the redemption with Qatar on the back end. But for us, you know, getting to Australia in the summer is a very difficult thing as it is already because award space is very limited, but I'm excited that we were able to book that as well. Miguel, you've got something with Delta and you swapped out something? Yeah, so we're, I'm taking a trip to, to Europe this summer with my brother. And so we're going to Tomorrowland, which is like a, probably one of the biggest music festivals. And it, it, so it's in Belgium, but I, I just need to get to Europe and then I'll figure it out from there. And I had booked this Delta sweet spot that I talked about on Instagram, where it's 75,000 Delta Sky Miles for business class, but you have to leave 
from Mexico. So if you travel between Mexico and Europe, you could do this for 75,000 miles in business class. But I saw that British Airways has first class off peak rates for 85,000 points. And they have a route from Mexico City to London. And I wanted to take advantage of it because it's a date that I actually need to get to Europe. And for me, I live in El Paso. So it's cheaper and easier for me to take a positioning flight to Mexico City than any other nonstop routes that I have to big airports here because it's domestic flight within Mexico if I if I fly from Juarez to Mexico City. So I decided to swap it out. I canceled the Delta Airlines flight and I rebooked us on British Airways First Class, which is the world's best business class, not Q Suites. And that's a joke because it's first class, but it's not as on par with the other first class products. So they call it the world's best business class. So we're we're going on British Airways first class from Mexico City to London. I booked that for 85,000 points plus about $466. So that's on the high end on, on surcharges, but that's what you get with British Airways. That's the only way to kind of experience that. It's still cheaper than if you paid cash for that. I'm okay with paying $400 for British Airways first class to get to Europe. I would have liked to have done this coming back from London because you would have access to the Concord room, which is a very nice lounge there in London, but we're going Mexico City to London. So that's what I booked or really rebooked this week. Yeah, those uh, taxes and fees, they can be a little steep uh, with BA or going out of London in general, right? All right. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. I think we uh, made some really nice redemptions this week. What do you guys think? That was a busy week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure was. All right. It's now time to move on to Ask Us. Hi, everyone. It's Jordan from Los Angeles. Follow you all on social media, specifically Instagram. And love seeing all the tips you guys are able to provide. I recently signed up for the American Express Gold Card and got a really special offer of 90,000 point sign-up bonus and a $200 statement credit. I wanted to hear from you guys what you thought was the best way to maximize those new points. Thanks so much, Jordan. It's so great to hear from you, Jordan. Thank you for sending us your video question. And just to recap for everyone, the American Express Gold Card is a charge card offered by American Express. It's got some of the best category bonus spending around, offering four points per dollar at restaurants and grocery stores, three points per dollar on flights, and one point per dollar on other purchases. It offers some great monthly credits to help offset the annual fee. And it sounds like Jordan got one of the best signup offers that I've ever seen on this card. Of course, we're gonna have all of this and more in our show notes along with the links to the card as well. So, Nicole, what advice are you gonna give Jordan? So I'm more of a budget traveler. So after getting our trip to Europe this, this summer, I would say try to see if you can get a transfer bonus with KLM Air France Flying Blue. 90,000 bonus, you could get maybe four tickets to Europe at about 50 to 60,000 points. And if you're using the card at supermarkets and at restaurants, you can squeeze in maybe round trip. So you could do two round trip tickets and leave the kids at home. Miguel, you know about that, <laughs> right? <laughs> or you could do four economy tickets and have the kids tag along. Once you get to Europe, you can find some cheap flights to go around. You can also use KLM to find low points tickets to different cities in Europe. So Miguel, you're more of a fancy traveler. What would you do with the 90,000 points? So probably what I'd do, Jordan, is transfer to a a which is a Japanese airline, and it's, you can only transfer to a a from American Express, none of the other banks, because there's a lot of great redemptions that you can do for business class, for, for one, if you leave the kids at home or any, everybody else. But there's a, there's a lot of good transfer partners, and they have really good rates to go st starting on a a with Japan, Depending on the low season, they have they have a cal ANA has a calendar for low season and, and high season. So they, they start at seventy five thousand points for round trip and business class to Japan, and if you go in high season, it's ninety thousand points. So it's perfect no matter what time of year you end up finding availability. They do have a little bit of higher surcharges, but in my opinion, it's still worth it. Another thing you can do with ANA, they're part of Star Alliance. So you could actually book another Star Alliance Airlines and the, the rates to go to Europe is 88,000 points round trip. Africa and the Middle East, 104,000 points. So you ha you'd have enough to either go to some parts of Asia or Europe round trip 
Now, some of the limitations of the ANA program is that you must book round trip only. You cannot do one way. But as part of the round trip, you could actually book open jaw. So you could book to one city and but come back from another. And you cannot book for other people unless they're your family. So if you want to book for somebody else, they must be added to your family account in ANA. Another limitation of the program is that transfers from American Express to ANA take about 48 hours. If you transfer your 90,000 points to ANA, they're going to expire after three years. So you need to use them in the next three years after you transfer. And then the surcharges. So the, the surcharges are going to vary from no surcharges to low, medium, and high, depending on the airline. So you need to figure out which airlines you want to book on. They could have very high surcharges. So the high surcharges are going to be with Lufthansa, Swiss, Austrian, and Swiss Air. But there's other airlines that don't charge as, as many surcharges. Now, aside from Star Alliance, ANA also has other partner airlines, Garuda Indonesia, Philippine Airlines, Vietnam Airlines. So they have very good code share partners that you can book with. So 90,000 points is enough to go business class round trip to Europe, some parts of Asia. And that, that's what I do with 90,000 points. What would you do, Mitch? Yeah, Miguel, I'm with you right there. Um, I'm all over ANA uh, because I think that's where there's some really good redemptions that you can do with your American Express points. For me, 90,000 American Express membership reward points, it's a huge sign up bonus. ANA round trip business, 75,000 points, depending on where you get it from LAX to Haneda. And I know, Miguel, I've seen you flying on their new product. I'm going to book it in business class in the room. Yeah, like you said, some of the fees and taxes are a little bit higher, but you get lower points cost. And that's what's great by using ANA as well. But what I do want to say to Jordan is, is the gold card from American Express. It's our number one card that we use in our household. It is front of wallet. And it gets a huge majority of the spending that we use in our household. You know, for example, you get the four points for every dollar when you go grocery or dining. That's what, you know, Paul and myself, we spend a lot of our money on is grocery and dining. And if you spend, you know, and this is easy to do in this day, regardless of what your household or your income is, if you do like $1,000, $2,000 a month just on food and dining, times that by four, 4,000, 8,000 points each month, you add that up over a year, that's easily a hotel night somewhere or a coach domestic flight easily that you can use those points on just off the spending. So for us being able to get that four points for every dollar, that's a big thing with this card as well. Kay Halani, you just got 90,000 American Express membership reward points. What are you going to tell Jordan he should do with them? Jordan, the theme of this show has been transfer bonuses, I think. So that is what I suggest to you is to wait for a transfer bonus if you can wait. And some of the great transfer bonuses, one of them would be British Airways that like we mentioned before. Mitch had mentioned how he used that for Q Suites and the technique that he used to get that done. In British Airways, you can also get seven economy tickets to Hawaii, or you could transfer those Amex points to Delta and get about eight to 10 Delta economy one-way flights if you do your searching very well. And you might need to pair that up with the trip back on another airline because you might not be able to match up those days because those good rates are pretty rare on Delta, but they're there. Serena, how about you? What would you tell Jordan he could do with his point? Hi, Jordan. So I have a first class answer, a business class answer, and an economy answer. So first class. Etihad Apartments. You can transfer Amex to Air Canada Aeroplan and book Etihad Apartment for 65,000 miles. Right now, Etihad's first class apartment is only available to and from Abu Dhabi and London. So for my business class example, I'm going to be very specific. And this one is for my San Francisco people. I really like Air Canada Aeroplan because you can add a stopover for up to 45 days by just adding an extra 5,000 miles to your award ticket. And you can see two countries instead of just one. 
For example, you can go from San Francisco to Singapore, stay there for up to 45 days, and then you can fly from Singapore to Bali, and that entire trip will cost 93,000 Aeroplan miles. You would transfer American Express membership rewards points to Aeroplan to book that flight. And this is fewer miles than what it would actually cost to book on Singapore Airlines' own website. And then for my economy answer, I'm going to piggyback off of Kehaulani and her Delta example. So last summer, I took my family to the Bahamas. And if you don't know, flying from San Francisco to the Bahamas, it's really far. It's a long haul to get to the Caribbean from the West Coast. We flew Delta and I transferred Amex points to Delta to book this flight. There is a small excise tax fee that you do have to pay to transfer to Delta from Amex. And from the West Coast, you'll probably have a layover in Atlanta before going on to the Bahamas. But this flight is going to be about 16,000 Delta miles in economy one way. So you can transfer Amex to Delta and book a family of five one way from the West Coast to the Caribbean with that bonus. Wow. Family of five. Really? You can do that? You can. You'd have to use some miles to come back home. I recommend getting some AA miles and finding the 10,000 mile um, trip back home to the West Coast. Wow. That's that's a really good tip there, Serena. All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Jordan, for sending us your question. If you would like to ask a question, we'd love to have you on our show. So drop us a line on any one of our social media channels, or you can email us at let's get to the points at gmail.com. And we'll feature your question right here. All right, before we wrap up, it's time to talk about what each of us have coming up this week on our social media and Instagram accounts. Miguel, what do you have? Yeah, I'm just going to recap our Disney trip uh, with the school and let people know how they can book it, including the, you know, the d details, the website, the requirements and all that. So people can know how to book that themselves as well. What do you have, Nicole? All right. So... This week, I have on my Instagram Reels an interview with Julia from GeoBreeze Podcast. I remember listening to her last summer during my training, and I was like, oh my God, I want to be on this podcast. Well, fast forward nine months, we made it happen, and you'll see our podcast released this week. What about you, Mitch? Yeah, as we talked about earlier, I was down in Santiago for a few days, and I flew Latam business class to get there. I've got some great Instagram reels of me traveling in their business class ahead in the next week. Serena, what do you have? So I've been meaning to talk about our Japan Airlines business class trip back home from Japan. So I'm finally going to get that together for you guys. And then Kehalani? I'm going to go over booking a United Airlines Economy Plus ticket and then changing it into a United Premium Plus seat with no status. And it's going to be for free. So it's a little trick on certain things. Okay, that's it for now. I want to thank all of our hosts, Serena from Passion for Points. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching and listening. Kay Halani from Points to Travel Expert. Bye. Miguel from Travel Sergeant. Nicole from Nicole's Travel Tips. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. And I'm Mitch Shannon from Seat to a Suite. Please remember to like and subscribe to this audio and video podcast wherever you find us on social media. That includes Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Finally, before we close, Miguel made an excellent Instagram reel recently on how he booked British Airways first class for himself and his brother for a summer trip to Europe. We leave you with his excellent tutorial to inspire you on how to book award travel. Thanks for watching and listening. Watch for our next episode soon. First thing you want to check is see which flights are available for your route. So I'm trying to fly from Mexico City to London. So the only non-stops available are British Airways or Aeromexico. Only British Airways has first class. I go to seat start Aero, Mexico City to London. For first class, I'm going to sort by first. So here you have all the dates available. On British Airways, book flight with Avios, which is what they call their points. From Mexico City to London, one way in July. Switch is to first class and I'm going to go two passengers or two seats available. I need 170,000 from American Express. Transfer points. I'm going to find British Airways. All 160,000 points I have in this account. So there it is. I have 170,000 points. Booking confirmed. So do we want to sit next to each other? Yeah, maybe.